I'm Donovan Snell from Lutron Electronics. In this video, I'm going to talk you through everything you need to know to activate ClearConnect Cypex devices from the Lutron app. Let's jump right in. Before we get started, let's talk a little bit about RF channel management. For most cases, the default RF channels are the best choice. However, there may be some projects, such as in multiple dwelling units, where it would be best to actively manage RF channels so that you can minimize interference. You can check out application note 811 to learn more about best practices for RF channel management in Radio RAW 3. For now, just know that if you decide to change a processor's RF channels, a system transfer should be completed afterwards. Any changes to RF channel selection must be made before activating wireless devices. App-based activation is used for ClearConnect Type-X devices such as Sonata Pro dimmers and Lumeris tunable white tape lights. Prior to activating devices, the system processors must have been activated and received a full programming transfer that included all of the devices you're intending to activate. To activate devices using the Lutron app, you will need to be signed in under Pro Installer mode and have that desired project open. You will also need to ensure that Bluetooth is enabled within the Lutron app settings. When you're using the Lutron app for activation, it's possible to activate devices no matter where they are on your project. But the best practice for activating ClearConnect Type-X devices is to start near the processor and work outward. This will ensure that there's an established communication path once it's time for a transfer. The Lutron app can be used to activate devices using one of three methods. Press, search, or auto. Generally, the easiest way to activate keypads and dimmers is by using the press method, while smart lighting, such as the Lumeris tape light, will require the search mode. Auto mode can be used to allow the Lutron app to choose the activation mode based on the loads in the area that you are activating. When opening a project within the Lutron app that has unactivated devices, the app may ask you if you'd like to enter activation mode. If you don't see that pop-up, or you already skipped it, no worries. I'll show you how to get into activation mode manually. Click on the gear icon in the top left, then select Activate Devices. You will then be taken into the Lutron app's activation mode. Select an area from the list, and then you will see a list of zones and controls to activate in that area. The app will be using the auto activation mode by default, but you can click the three dots in the top right of the screen to select press or search instead. When using the Lutron app for ClearConnect Type-X device activation, your phone will send a Bluetooth signal to nearby devices as part of the activation process. Keep your phone near the device that you're activating until it has been successfully activated. Once the green check mark appears for that device, you can move on to activating the next one. If you encounter issues during device activation, make sure that you are within Bluetooth range, that you're not activating a device that's already activated, and Lastly, verify that you're not attempting to activate a companion dimmer or standalone device by mistake. After all devices have been activated, you will need to sync activation data back into the Lutron Designer database. If you're able to use the internet, the easiest way to do this is simply to sync app edits from within Lutron Designer. This will pull all of the app-based activation data into the project file. If no cloud access is possible for this step, you'll need to manually sync activation data back into the Lutron Designer project through the Activate tab. Whichever method you use for synchronizing activation data, 
you must wait at least 10 minutes after activating ClearConnect Type-X devices before conducting a transfer to the system. This wait time ensures that the newly activated devices are ready to receive programming via their new communication network. I like to use this wait time to move on and activate any ClearConnect Type A devices that I have. Keep in mind, even though a device has been activated, it may not be able to communicate all the way back to the processor. You will have to ensure that ClearConnect Type X range rules have been followed and that enough devices have been activated to establish a communication pathway all the way back to the processor. All right, that's everything you need to know to successfully activate ClearConnect Type-X devices. I recommend that you always follow the rules and guidelines I've outlined in this video so that your device activation process can go as smoothly as possible. Now that I've finished activating my ClearConnect Type-X devices, I can move on to activating my ClearConnect Type-A devices. To continue on this journey with me, look out for my next video where I'll cover activating devices from the Lutron Designer software. Thank you for joining me and stay tuned for more from Lutron.